but yes, Egypt is facing a lot of challenges, of course, on the short term and on the long term. But Egypt is only a small village in a bigger uh, planet called planet Earth. After the revolution, it's, it's a mess. There is no security. It's so, so bad Egypt. We saw a new Egypt we didn't see before. It's more worse than before. And I think today more than ever the private sector, social entrepreneurs, civil society will have to take on this role and we cannot expect that politicians will save our planet, that we have to do it with ourselves. Today we're going to take a look at one of the largest organic farms in the Middle East and show how it created sustainable change through biodynamic farming. Our documentary film producer, Timothy Wolfer, will be taking us on this journey. I'm Kim Clark. And I'm Pat Werheim. We go out into the world to look at everything. Topics such as food deserts, wage theft, and recidivism in jails. Access to health care, education, welfare, major issues we face at home and around the world today. Come search with us for answers to these issues and more as we discover new answers to today's big questions. With the growing population, rapid consumption of resources, and labor abuse, socially minded entrepreneurs are developing sustainable business solutions to these issues. And today, we've come to Second Farms to meet one of those kinds of people, Dr. Ibrahim Avalesh, who took the vision of sustainable development, brought it to Egypt, and produced a farm that specializes in organic growing. Today, we're going to learn about him, how he did it, and how he has revolutionized organic farming. The question is, what makes Sekhem unique? Sekhem employs organic growing methods because they want to improve biodiversity in agriculture and won't produce unsustainable waste. All material outcomes can either be sold or reused in the farming process. The company chose tea and cotton as its first agricultural products because they grow easily in the desert. The brand Isis in Egypt is a very successful brand. The, the equity of the brand is very high. It's connected with, associated with high quality product, associated with organic products, and healthy one. We have started this business uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, and we have started with uh, uh, the herbal tea. Introduced the organic concept to the Egyptian market when nobody in the Egyptian market uh, knows anything about the organic uh, products. It all starts in the fields that have been set up to grow experimental plants to introduce into the Egyptian market. Right. So I'm here with Angela and she's given us a tour of the farming side of Sekem. So can you tell me, uh, what are we going to do today? I have a look in the, uh, in the animal husbandry. What is the, the food? It's coming now every day and we're getting a new silage today. We are in the silage making time and the other thing we got the, the, the compost production is in a big production now these days because to uh, have it ready for the, for the next cultivation in spring, the both jobs for today. This plant is called Jatrofa Kurkas. It's an energy plant. The seeds, which will be in here, inside here, uh, has content about 50% oil. This oil, you can use it immediately, put it in the tractor and have a biofuel. Here we are in the field. What plant are we about to try? Uh, we will try stevia, which is the sugar plant. All right, so can I have a taste? Sure, you can. And I would like if your camera will be possible, will be able to take this taste into the film. I 
Alright, here we go. It's kind of a green leafy plant. At first it's kind of bitter, but then it gets super sweet. Am I supposed to swallow the uh, the green thing? There's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can swallow, yeah. No problem. It's really good. It's Isn't very, it? It's very sweet, very tasty. Mm -hmm. I like it. Everyone, every time when I come to this field, I have to eat some leaves of this mm, to enjoy the sugar. After Sekim decides on what plants will be grown, they are then sent on to a nursery. Who are making seedlings and selling them to farmers from uh, vegetables and, uh, and fruits. So we, we see here uh, uh, cabbage, cabbage seeds. They are prepared and put into special petmos or petal earth, afterwards covered, and then they, they have to grow. And after they they are a certain length, they are sold to farmers. Farmers all over Egypt who come and, 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 and buy these. And this one, here we will make crafting. We'll change, put two, two plants together. Now you see the girls, they have on the left side a tray and on the right one. The left side are the roots, the, 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 the right side are the, the upper part and they are cutting both, putting them together and putting them now in the tray in the middle and afterwards it will go out into the greenhouse to, to, to grow. When the company started we were the first, actually the pioneers in Egypt to have this grafting company uh, preparing those plants uh, for, for the local farmers to, 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 to grow them. In a, in a system which is professional these first one or two weeks of growing, so, so the farmer when he, when, when he buys it, he doesn't have this experience to, 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 to have a seed and to put it in the ground, etc. So we make it in a professional way. We know how to do it and then he buys the, 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 the small plant and he just put it in his fields or in his garden or in his, uh, in his glass grow greenhouse and has the, he is sure that it will, it will grow and will get him bring him the income or the, the, uh, the return he, he needs. Three, three and a half million uh, plants a year are sold, are produced and, uh, uh, and, and, and sold from the, in, in this company. Sekem has a community of farmers that they taught how to grow organic. They sell to these farmers who grow the crops, then turn around and sell them back to Sekem to be turned into products. So one big part go to our sister company, Isis, which fill it in tea bags. And uh, other part go to, to Europe. Main customer are in Germany and in Holland, in France, some in England and other in, uh, we have a partner in also in US and in some Asian uh, region. All these farmers are uh, associated in the Egyptian Biodynamic Association. They come in here in, in the, and then uh, we take uh, analysis according to the specification given to the farmers. And uh, then we treat the herbs with uh, CO2. In the, in the big tank it's a high pressure process to get rid of all kind of, uh, of insects. It's a preventive action also. We increase our uh, seeds value every year by a compound annual growth rate uh, uh, 28 to 30 percent. And this is a very good uh, growth rate. And we have uh, now uh, about 30,000 outlets uh, we covered by our distribution. And we exporting our products to uh, 14 countries all over the world. Uh, mainly in the Middle East and for Europe. We cover all the steps from farming to uh, delivering to the, to the end customer. And this is called vertical integration, of course. Sekem has become one of the largest organic farms in the Middle East. They have done this with forward thinking and a holistic business model that can help transform our society's unsustainable economy.
climate change is considered one of the biggest challenges of mankind in, in this century at least. And um, when people look into climate change, they always think about uh, energy and industry and pollution and CO2 emissions. And they forget that the biggest polluter of all sectors is agriculture. <laughs> so nobody has this in mind. Huh? That our current agricultural systems in the world are emitting more CO2 than our energy sectors or industrial sectors. So agriculture is part of the problem and agriculture can be part of the solution. We have proven here through biodynamic agriculture that we can, uh, instead of emitting yearly a ton of CO2 from every acre, we can sequester one and a half tons of, of CO2 per acre every year. We have sequestered millions of tons in our fields here over the last 30 years. And what we can do on a small scale, the whole planet can do. So I'm standing just outside Sekem, and this is the kind of terrain that the farm was originally built on about 40 years ago. To understand Sekem's success, you have to look at the history and the original vision Dr. Abolesh had for Sekem. After the Six-Day War in 1967, Egypt was in a state of disarray. Abolesh wanted to help his country recover and drafted a plan for a new kind of company. War never ends in the country. And I saw that the country was completely destroyed. There is no infrastructure. There is a lot of miserable situation in education and in economy. And so I decided to start in the desert far away from all the social order that exists since centuries in the country. He then started to think about a model how to contribute to Egypt's development. What they used was biodynamic growing methods to reclaim the desert and start growing organic. And this is something which was never done before, uh, ever. I mean, nobody went with biodynamic or even organic farming into Africa. Uh, Egypt's uh, GDP per capita then was $1,200, when in the US it was $30,000, and organic was less than a percent of the, of the market. So to whom to sell an expensive organic product in Egypt could never work. Because this area is one of the baddest soil in the country. And it, nothing is here leveled. We have to level some places to build an irrigation system. Also, to do something new, you have to discover how to do it. Sekem has a social mission as well. They created a community that helps address Egyptians' deteriorating health and education system, as well as promote cultural preservation. The, the, this concept of a community in the desert, where people work together, live together, develop together, was the first picture of his dream of Sekem. He wanted to, to introduce what he called Iqtisad al-Mahabba. Uh, in English, it's economics of love and Today it would be called fair trade, but it, the term was not existing then. And it was a way to manage the supply chain in, in a transparent and fair way. This initiative should then also care for the communities around and should give back to the people. People thought in, in, a, in, a, in a capitalistic system this will never work. It will make you more expensive, less competitive. So you will go out of the market. Dr. Abolesh developed the Wheel of Balance which takes into consideration rights, culture, economy, and ecology. If we start here having a vision, then we do business. Then we develop also our education system, and, and then we develop business here. And then we discover we have to care for the earth. And then we have also to care for human rights. And that is an ongoing process, that is a balance. When you see that is so imbalanced with here, you have to do put effort here. And that is the wheel of balance. And uh, to balance all of that is something what I experience 
very difficult for human beings. The biodynamic standard includes the idea of a holistic organism where it's not only about producing some food, but it's also about having an organism where animals, plants and people work, live and are developed together. The people in Egypt, like everywhere in the underdeveloped country, they seeking economic success. They want to build a new country, a new world, only through economy. Not knowing that this European and American have built their culture and their civilization through education and through arts, not through business. Educated people can build an uh, economy, healthy economy. This holistic vision led Dr. Abelesh to win the 2003 Right to Livelihood Award, also known as the Alternative Nobel Prize, setting the stage as an international model for sustainable development. To make sure Sekem's employees had access to this balance, they built a school for children of employees, constructed a mosque for daily prayers, and provide access to vocational training, arts, and music. Here at the Sekem School, they've adapted the Waldorf method of teaching, which allows children to explore new ideas and things on their own. The Waldorf method is based around self-expression and uses a strong artistic element. We had a big problem in Egypt with the system of education. To only educate for the examinations. To go to faculty of medicine to be a doctor or engineer. Not to be a good man or a, a good human being in the society. The children we can build with them and we hope with them with a new future. I like to say that we believe very much that we are doing a job that is very much needed for Egypt now. I don't think what is lacking in Egypt is education. What's lacking in Egypt is proper education, an education that focuses on the personality, on the human side, and not only the brain as a machine. Yeah, for example, in education, we try to, um, to turn the information from abstract information to the things we can do, we can feel, we can feel, we can hear, we can taste. So, um, share all the senses in the process of education, not only keeping our minds to keep it in the, in the exams in the last of the year, no, education for the whole life. We concentrate on the quality of education, not of the numbers. Part of the original vision for SECM was a university. Three years ago, they established Heliopolis University, which specializes in sustainable development and is one of the first in the Middle East. And we try as much as possible to involve our students, at least to make them able to think. Because we believe that it's not about what we are teaching them now. The problem of today are not the problem of tomorrow. So it's not really very useful to give him a very deep experience on, on, in one specific topic or subject. Because by the time maybe he's graduated in five, ten years, this will be a totally outdated topic. But if you give him the tools on how to uh, ask the right question, how to be able to find the right answer, how to use his intellect, his uh, mentality to um, be able to solve new problems, this is where you are giving him right skills. One thing that separates SECM from a lot of the other development projects we've looked at on our show is the fact that they have a strong commitment to art, and you can see this throughout their entire campus. 
This uh, commitment to art has also played into Heliopolis University. So this is like this one here. And we said, okay, with the students, we can also improve our skills with a scissor. And so they got just the idea and now they make their own creation of a Matisse. Important is that to improve their skills, to have more skills, to deal with a scissor as like they learned in school, just with geometric uh, shapes. And uh, we like always here to encourage them to do something new. Sekem's success was threatened in 2013 during the Egyptian Revolution. During this time, Helmi Abelesh was imprisoned. Politically in Egypt in 2011, the revolution came. Uh, a revolution which, which I didn't expect, as many other people didn't expect, ever to happen. Things changed in Egypt dramatically over the last three, four years. But also things changed in my life because it's linked to everyone in the top uh, leadership of Egypt from our president downwards, they then uh, questioned whether I had anything to do with this uh, corruption and things which happened in this in these times. So I went to uh, uh, prison for 100 days. I was under remand custody. I was not sentenced, but I was questioned. Now looking into this 100 days, I think it was the best thing which happened in my life and uh, I had no Blackberry and no iPad and no access to, uh, to internet, which seemed impossible because I was 24 hours saving the planet huh? and in direct contact with every minister in Egypt and prime minister and managing a lot of things and, and, and so on. To conclude, the outcome of this 100 days for me were a total refocus on what I want to do when I'm out, which gladly happened after 100 days uh, and instead of giving all these efforts to to the political scene where I was trying to promote my ideas which didn't lead to much on the ground in the end I think now more than ever that politicians for example are, are really slaves of a system and not capable of changing lots of what they want to change because they are so tightly managed by the system that they are not able to, to, to change anything in the system. After revolution, it's, it's a mess. There is no security. It's so, so bad Egypt. We saw a new Egypt we didn't see before. It's more worse than before because with Ikhwan, Muslim Brotherhood, um, there is no future. Only a greedy um, group want to have the chair of the authority and the other of the people go to hell or doing something else. Because the people understand the freedom wrong. The people understand the freedom that I will not work, then I have a big salary and it's not a freedom, it's not a social justice. We have to work and work very hard in this time. Freedom is responsibility to do my work work hard. I see the future will be better, really. And all the people, in you know, Egyptian people, they are pessimistic, really. And I think today more than ever that private sector, social entrepreneurs, civil society will have to take on this role and we that cannot expect that politicians will save our planet, that we have to do it with ourselves. The question of why has Sekim not been multiplied? more often, neither in Egypt, nor in Africa, nor anywhere else. Because I'm always asked this, and people come and we have guests from all over Africa coming here, and we, we, we show, we have a guest house here, we really want to show people and inspire them. And then a lot of them ask me, why isn't it that there are more Sekems, or Sekem-like organizations? And I think the, uh, the, the one thing is, the one answer I always have is that the moment you take a picture of what Sekem's development is today and copy it to any other country, this is already deemed to fail. If you come back in a week, we will have changed. 
And so it's not about copying what we have reached at a certain stage. It's about getting the same spirit, the same development uh, strive, and a group of people, a community of people, dedicated and engaged, active on this path. SECAM may not be a model for sustainability that can be recreated everywhere in the world. However, it is an example that organic farming, fairness to employees, and focusing on the environment can be profitable and work to develop people and countries. These are the kinds of things that SECAM brought to Egypt, right? Before you guys, no one was doing this kind of farming. That's right, yes. And nowadays, yeah, uh, a lot of people doing compost even here in the surrounding, some years ago, about seven years ago, we produced compost and we sell a lot of compost. And now so many people are making compost that we stopped to sell compost because there's enough from other people. Does that then feel good because you guys were the ones that brought that knowledge to Egypt? Yes, this really feels good. Because uh, it's uh, so important, so it gives a good feeling. Awesome.